Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life with best-selling author and coach Kathy Williams, a show to help you tap into the support of the universe and access the abundance that's available in every area of your life. Listen in for conversations and tools to create more ease, joy, and possibility with family, relationships, business, and living. Kathy's joyful perspective will help you tap into your own wisdom and create a life of presence and abundance your way. Listen live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, or anytime on iTunes or at IOM FM. Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and I'm so delighted you're here. I just love hearing from listeners, especially about the questions and topics you have for shows, but also about what we may have not addressed in a particular show. I've had lots of questions about asking questions, and that was uh, the topic of last week's show, The Power of Curiosity, Living in the Question. And today's show is something that's been often requested as well, and that's loving your body. You know, we're fed, inundated, really, by messages that our bodies aren't pretty enough, aren't slender enough, aren't fit enough, aren't this, aren't that, aren't the other thing, and that we should be being and doing more so our body can be different. And while desiring our body to be different is not a bad thing, right? Most of us try to judge our body into becoming better. And I know this well. I did this for a long, 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 long time. (laughs) In fact, I went through bouts of being overweight, of being anorexic, of, um, you know, just working out and working out and working out. I'd, I'd like eat cheesecake and then go run on the treadmill type of thing. And um, ultimately, it led to a huge sense of disharmony with my body, uh, a real sense that it was me against body, right? <laughs> and, and this is not a fun way to live. In fact, it's it's not really why we're here. We're not here on the planet to create the perfect body. <laughs> so so um, there are a couple of ways you can submit your questions for today's show. One is by Facebook messaging me, Kathy Jones Williams on Facebook. Um, and make sure you indicate kind of, oh, I'm a listener to the show because we get random Facebook requests too. I'm sure you know that if you're on Facebook. Um, the other way is by calling into the show, and you can do that at iom.fm, and the number's right there. You can call in and be on the show, ask your question. <laughs> um, and then you can always message me at meetkathywilliams.com. I won't get it while I'm live on the show, but I will definitely get it. And especially if you have show ideas or some question you have, it's a great way to be in touch. And then also YouTube. I'm a huge YouTube person. I um, do videos quite often, and it's Kathy Williams Public Figure right there. So um, those are some good ways to be in touch. And I love being in touch. That way, this is not a one-way communication. (laughs) It's actually a two-way street. Uh, which is really fun. So if you've had body stuff, um, you know, I know sometimes people have an illness that they're struggling with, um, body image stuff. If you have questions, send them my direction, either for today's show or for a future show. So um, again, meet kathywilliams.com. Kathy has a K. Uh, Williams has an S, is a great way to be in touch, as well as a space to get a free money rain meditation um, that people seem to love. So, um, yeah, loving your body. Did your parents teach you that when you were a kid? Mine didn't really. I don't think they loved their bodies, so how could they teach me to love mine? (laughs) Yet your body is this intelligent, amazing brilliant, miraculous organism. 
And it's actually an ecosystem, right? It has a um, lot, many, many, probably millions of cells of good bacteria that aren't even like your body, but there are things living in there that are useful for digesting food and, and stuff like that. Um, and, and just think of it, your body is nearly 100 trillion cells. I think people say from 80 to 100 trillion cells. That's a lot of cells, right? All these trillions of cells. You're so abundant. <laughs> and they, um, like millions of them leave every day, right? Oh, like something like 300 million cells die every minute, okay? And then producing something in the range of 300 billion, billion with a B, right? That's a lot, cells every day, right? So letting go of the ones that we don't require, bringing in new, healthy, vibrant cells. And so what is it that makes them not seem new and vibrant and keeps them in the old patterns, right? Well, our points of view and what we order up, right? If we're constantly saying, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, well, <laughs> that's what you're ordering from your body, from your, the universe. And our bodies are constantly listening, listening to every thought, right? Listening and, and aware of every vibration. And that's not to say now you need to be super vigilant and, and you're a bad person because of what you've thought about or what you've thought about your body. It's just, what if we could be more loving? So today's show is going to bring in some exercises for being more loving to your body and uh, some discussion about maybe unwinding and ways to unwind that barrage of judgment that we inflict on ourselves and inflict on our bodies and a way to create more harmony and ease and well-being. So I'm glad you're here. I know the more kind I've been to my body, the greater my body has shown up. Like shedding pain, shedding weight, shedding old layers of stuff, tension, and showing up more vibrant, more youthful, more fun, more energized, um, just by what I've let go of and what I've um, tapped into in terms of ease and, and positivity and harmony. So let's go into a little bit more about the miracle your body is. I mean, think of all the sensory bits that your body is receiving right now, like receiving my voice through the airwaves, receiving um, whatever support you're on, whether you're standing or sitting on something, the support of that. It's breathing without you having to think about that, which is my God, amazing, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we would be consumed by thoughts about, oh yeah, I must inhale right now. Oh yeah, I've got to exhale. Oh yeah, I've got this you know, salad in my stomach. Let me make sure I digest that, right? We don't have to think about any of that, which is quite wonderful. So, um, and your body is aware of all these bits of information from what your left ear feels like right now which now that your attention is on it, you're probably aware, but your body's been processing that information this whole time, even without your conscious mind there, okay? And, and your body knows to put an eye cell in the eye and a liver cell in the liver. So it's quite miraculous. Your brain can hold five times as much information as the Encyclopedia Britannica. Probably more than that. I'm not really sure, but <laughs> that's my guess. A nerve impulses travel at 170 miles an hour. Right? Um, your amazing body converts all that you take in from the the air to the food to the to the water, you know, into itself, and lets go of the rest. What it doesn't need. On any given day, you'll lose between 60 and 100 strands of hair. Maybe if you have thick hair, more. And if you have thin hair, maybe less. 
but that's even before you notice it, right? The, um, and hair is virtually indestructible, right? It can catch on fire, but it decays at such a slow rate, like super slow, like aluminum slow, you know, super really slow. So um, your heart creates enough pressure to squirt blood 30 feet. And by doing so, it pumps blood through 60,000 miles of veins and capillaries all day long. Right? Are you beginning to have like a reverence for your body? It's doing all these miraculous things, replacing all these cells, pumping blood through 60,000 miles. That's far. <laughs> um, you know, pumping six quarts of blood every every minute. Um, and, and in one day, your blood travels a total of 12,000 miles. Isn't that amazing? Like your blood's gone on more of more trips than you have. <laughs> it's traveled further than you have. <laughs> um, and and skin, skin. As the more I learn about the human body, the more I'm just so impressed. Right? We develop from one sperm and one egg into this organism that has something in the range of a hundred trillion cells. Right, and all in their harmony, taking the oxygen from your lungs, wherever it needs to go in the body. Right? The skin, each square inch of your skin, a little square, right? It contains four yards of nerve fibers, 600 pain sensors, 1300 nerve cells, 9,000 nerve endings. 36 or so heat sensors, 75 pressure sensors, 100 sweat glands, and, and all the hairs, like each of the hairs on your body is attached to a muscle, which means our bodies have like innumerable muscles. Mm. So there's a lot going on here. A lot going on here. Your liver has 400 functions or more, more than 400 functions, De detoxifying, synthesizing proteins, um, producing chemicals necessary for digestion. Um, and even if you had a large amount of your liver, let's say half, removed in surgery or from some trauma, it would grow back within a month. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Okay. So I'm not going to go into more of these amazing characteristics of your body, even though your body is super unique with its fingertips, you know, like, and, and even when you're a three month old baby in the womb, your body already has its unique fingerprints. Okay. Um, like by 13 weeks. Um, it's so miraculous, and yet we don't focus on that. We tend to focus on the flaws, the things we think are wrong with it, that it has too much adipose tissue, which is fat, um, that, that it's got stretch marks, that it doesn't live up to the Maybelline model who's been airbrushed you know, by three different people in the, in the graphic design lab you know, or whatever. So, what if we dropped all of the comparison of our body to anyone else's body and invited our body to show up in the uniqueness and as what it would like to? So I used to, um, I, I've taught some classes called Body Harmony and Loving Your Body, and those are on my website, um, meetkathywilliams.com in the shop. And oh yeah, as you uh, you as a listener get 20% off items in the shop at meetkathywilliams.com by entering the code SMRADIO. And I think the SM are in caps and radio is small. 
but if you can't get that to work, just email us and let us know. Um, and in some of those classes, um, one of the things that we that we explore is exercises to um, to have more harmony with the body and questions to ask. So one of the questions I always like to ask is like, if your body were to show up how it would like to show up, would you allow that? Body, show me how you would like to show up. Body, how would you like to show up? Show me. And when I first started asking this question, it's interesting because I always thought it would show me by showing me a picture or showing me someone on the street. You know, how would you like to show up? Show me. And then I realized, oh, you no, know, show me. Like in real life, how you would like to show up. Okay. And as I started to get intimate with that question and drop my judgment, because initially it was like, oh my God, what if it shows up in, what if it wants to be really fat? <laughs> or what if it wants to be like this way that I don't actually want to be, this way that I judge? Um, as I started to shed those sort of nervous, like tense spaces in myself that, that were concerned about what my body would really like, and I dropped that and softened into, you know what? However my body would like to show up is going to be a gift. And I'm just going to allow it to show up how it would like to show up. My spine got more aligned. I um, My digestion got better, right? How would you like to show up? Well, that includes how you digest food. Okay. I have fewer cravings. Okay, and I'll tell you what else helped with that. Um, and it shed weight. I used to love to be the weight of 117, 118. That's like what I thought my ideal weight was, right? That was my mind-inflicted weight that I thought was good for me. And when I really started just letting my body show up how it would like to be, I weigh 108, and that feels really good. Right? But it wasn't a superimposed thing. It wasn't me saying, oh, this is what I should weigh. You know, it was just allowing my body to come to the homeostasis that it would like. Right? And your body maintains homeostasis all the time. It maintains you know, the hormones in your blood. It maintains the the temperature and heat regulation. It, it maintains um, all, all these different things going on, right? What if you could allow it to govern the way it shows up in the world too, right? instead of trying to manipulate that by some external idea of how you should be? Okay. So, as I started to really harmonize with my body is intelligent, it's going to show me. It became more of an intimate conversation and it started to show me. So I would walk through the buffet and I'd be like, okay, now I don't even ask because it's pretty automatic, but it would be like, okay, body, show me what you would like. And it, and everything was really evident. This, right? This food, whatever it is that it wants, is very inviting. Not this. It would be super repelling. Like, there's no way I would choose that. Right? It's because my body had the, yes, this. No, not that. Yes, this. Like that. And it wasn't a rigid mental idea. Now, how do you get to that place? You get to that place by asking questions. Right? Like, Okay, I'm hungry. Body, show me what you would like to eat. And then you open the fridge and whatever pops, right? Oh, there's the yogurt. And that's just like what's, what seems like it's in neon or that's like where I automatically gravitate. Then go there, right? And, and a lot of why we don't do this, which was so natural for us as children, 
I don't want those peas because they they're disgusting my body right <laughs> like, uh, has been overridden and we override it because mom says grandma says you can't get up from the table until you eat those peas uh, we learn to override it by having to eat everything on our plate we're a good person if we do we override it by reading the book that says you should really be eating this whether that thing is salads or whether that thing is like you must have a certain number of carbohydrates or no carbohydrates we get all these mentally imposed ideas which override us hearing what our body actually desires okay and sometimes what the body actually desires might be that chocolate cake because you're lacking magnesium. And when you get that, it doesn't mean eat three slices. It might be like two bites is enough to satisfy whatever's going on. And I know that it can be hard to trust yourself in the beginning with this because, because of all the messages we've received or all our past history that says, no, when I get the cheesecake, I actually eat half the cheesecake, right? Yeah, would you be willing to let all of that go, right? Would you be willing to tap into more trust with your body, right? Ask your body to make it really clear. And it will, right? And just start to trust it. Maybe that's baby steps. Maybe it's like, oh, it really seems like I'm gravitating toward the chocolate cake. Is that truly my body's desire? Or is that because that's kind of my emotional eating habit to cover up the pain I'm feeling? Hmm? So ask more questions. And if you need help with asking questions, uh, check out last week's show, The Power of Curiosity. And then there was a show also I did in August on um, asking questions because right? questions will help you discern whether something's just a habit or whether it's actually yeah I am listening to my body and that does mean eating this this strange thing for lunch you know I was in, and and then sometimes we have to face people's judgment right you're going out to the bar and you're not drinking you're you're going to dinner with someone and you're only ordering dessert hmm? Sometimes that, you know, food is so connected to both um, camaraderie and social um, interaction in our society, as well as, as nourishment. And judgment is, is, is very mixed in. So um, I was in Greece over the summer and their yogurt is amazing, right? Really different from American Greek yogurt, for sure. And, and so I went to this restaurant and we had been waiting like an hour and 15 minutes to go to this restaurant. And, and um, standing outside, walking around, wa watching the sunset. And, and I got in and I looked at the menu and I was like, nothing's really popping except the yogurt. So I ordered that. I'll have some yogurt with honey and nuts or whatever. And and the lady looked at my husband. The waitress looked at her, looked at him and said, what's wrong with her? <laughs> As though something's wrong with me because this is what I've chosen, right? So sometimes it requires going through judgment. Sometimes it requires navigating people's judgments. Like, I baked this just for you. Oh, thank you so much. You know what? I'm really going to enjoy this for breakfast. Or I'll have a bite now. And then, um, you know, I really can't eat anything now, but uh, aside from a bite. But I'm so looking forward to it later tonight. And something like that. Where it's like you're not letting external pressure interrupt your knowing and connection with your body all right so we went off in in the um direction of kind of listening to your body and in, in in terms of food and eating what about just loving your body as it is okay. so many of us have these parts of us we judge i mean for me a, for a long time it was my thighs i'm sure some of you can relate um and then it became my fingernails 
they were uh, like not strong and they were flaky and they were, um, and so whatever we're judging, we're not actually appreciating. So I'm going to do lead this little exercise, and what I'd like you to do is find a part of your body that you judge, but I'd like you to make it something that you don't judge. You don't judge super intensely. Like don't pick the worst thing that drives you nuts that that makes you cry. Okay, <laughs> if you have something like that, pick something else for the first time. All right, we're just exploring, experimenting with this exercise. So be easy on yourself part of your body that you judge. And now go ahead and judge it, right? It's not the way I'd like it to be. It should be different, right? Now go ahead and find appreciation for it. Think of what it can do or has done for you. Right? Those thigh muscles move you through the world. Whatever it is, find appreciation for it right now. So do the judgment and the appreciation coexist in the same moment? Or does that appreciation kind of override the judgment? All right. So one of the first things you can start to do is when you judge, a part of your body or the way your body's doing something. Let's say, oh, my digestion is terrible. Well, I'm really grateful that it works a lot of the time. Yesterday, it judged, I mean, not judged. <laughs> Yesterday, it digested a whole barbecue lunch, whatever it is, right? Oh my goodness, I'm really thankful. I don't have to think about how my body's gonna digest the food. It just does it, okay. And what actions could I choose that would make it even better? Body, show me. Right? What could I choose? What could I add that would make this even better? And you might be led to probiotics or you might be led to a, a cleanse or a fast or to avoid a certain food that kind of has presented you with problems. You know, as you ask questions and ask your body to show you, it's your partner, right? It's what allows you to experience life on earth. So let it be your partner. Let it inform you as to what can make things even better. And it will. So just to recap, every time you have judgment of your body, when you catch it, don't make yourself wrong, just okay. What appreciation could I have for this? What gratitude can I tap into right now? Oh, my voice is not working well today or it's tired today. Okay, well, I'm really grateful that usually it works just fine. Most of the time, I don't even have to think about it. You know, so bringing in that kindness of appreciation gratitude, loving energy for your body so that, you, so that you tap into that, which kind of just annihilates the judgment. So that's the first exercise and we're going to um, do another in a little bit. But the, I have a whole class called um, Five Days of Energetic Exercises for Loving Your Body. And that is in the shop at meetkathywilliams.com. And you can get that for 20% off. You can get anything in the shop, including private sessions, 20% off um, with the code SMRADIO. So, um, yeah. We're going to go to break right now, but when we come back, we'll talk more about loving your body despite what's going on around you. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization 
Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. We have all read about or heard about becoming more spiritual, about working with our energy, the awakening, the shift, about being our authentic selves, living our purpose, reaching our true potential. The challenge doesn't lie in the knowledge, it lies in the execution. The struggle becomes connecting to that limitless self-healing part that each one of us has and gaining control of who we truly are. Hi. I'm Dr. Reverend Aisha Hogan, and you are invited to join me on a master's practice on OM Times, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard and 11 a.m. Pacific Standard. Would you like to have a life of more clarity and abundance? What's possible for you when you get out of your own way? Connect with Kathy Williams for private coaching or join her online to transform your relationship with abundance in every area of your life with the Radical Abundance course. Kathy also travels, facilitating Radical Abundance and Access Consciousness bars and foundation around the world. She'll be in London, Hawaii, Hilton Head, and other fun locations soon. Visit www.meetkathywilliams.com for a class schedule to connect with Kathy or invite her to your region and get some free goodies. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look. Flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams and... Today's conversation is all about letting go of judgment and loving your body. And this is not something we're usually trained to do. It's not something that we see going on much around us, right? I mean, how many of us had parents who were really kind to their bodies? <laughs> how about... Uh, religion, like religious ideas, uh, even spiritual ideas, a lot of times are about transcending your body, right? And the spirit is much more valuable than the body. And it's not to say that the spirit is not important, right? And, and it's not to say that we need to make our body super significant. I'm not saying that. But it's not to make the body insignificant either. Right. Um, I'm not sure if it was. I think it was um, St. Francis who, when he was dying, he said something to the effect of he should have treated this donkey better. And what he meant was his body. Right. He just kind of like neglected it and wasn't the kindness that he truly could have been. And if you're truly spiritual, then you're going to regard the body highly because it was created by the same source as everything, right? God gave it to you if you're religious, right? God gave it to you. And so it's something to treat well. That's not to make it the main emphasis of your day, right? Like I mentioned earlier on the show, your purpose on earth is not like to ha come out with this perfect body, right? I mean, if that happens, cool. But so many of us idealize, you know, images or are uh, a really, you know, uh, an idealized body, right? Like we have, we hold some ideal that we're supposed to match. And what if we let go of that and allowed our body to show up as it would like to? And one of the things I mentioned is, is that as I started to trust my body as the intelligent organism it is, I mean, if it knows 
to put an eye cell in the eye and a liver cell in the liver, then it must also know what nutrients it requires. It must actually know what foods would provide that if I trust it, if I get out of the way. So I started to ask my body, when I opened a menu, I'd be like, okay, body, make it really clear. And something would jump out at me, and that's what I would order. Right? It would be highlighted like neon. Oh, this. And then I'd order that. And it'd be just the right thing. And we always know when we've had just the right thing. Right? Um, and oftentimes, if we go to order that, the next time is not as satisfying because it wasn't what we required in that moment right we had superimposed this idea that oh yeah this chicken soup is amazing and you go back for it and it's like eh, it was all right <laughs> right so beginning to trust this amazing organism even more and then we did an exercise in gratitude for the body right? This part of you that you judge, this, um, you know, area or whatever it is, if you judge your digestion, what can you find that you appreciate about that part? Another thing I wanted to bring in is just the idealization of like youth in our culture, right? Like youth is so important and, and, and we don't recognize that, that, our body is constantly replacing itself. You're, no part of your body is more than seven years old-ish, right? Your stomach lining replaces itself something like, I don't know, every month or something like that. Maybe it's, it's less than that, right? Like maybe it's every four days, I forgot, four weeks or four days, something. <laughs> It's four days, you know, and, and so your body, like I mentioned earlier, it's replacing some billions of cells every day. So what is it that would make our body show up worse rather than better? Or if, if you know, I don't have the same ankle I had 10 years ago, why would my ankle still have that problem? because we're perpetuating that, right? And one of the cool things I learned um, from Access Consciousness and some other things is to start to let go of the points of view that are creating that pattern, creating that wrinkle, creating whatever it is. So one of the cool things you can do is go in front of a mirror, and I'll give you an example of how I use this. Go in front of a mirror find something you'd like to change and you say all the points of view creating that either destroy and uncreate those or just collapse those all back to energy all the points of view perpetuating that showing up collapse those back to energy all the points of view creating that collapse those back to energy all the points of view perpetuating that collapse those back to energy and keep looking at it Keep looking at it, keep doing this. It may take 15 minutes. It may take 15 minutes, it may take 20 minutes, and then stop, and you can come back to it tomorrow, okay? So, so by clearing the points of view that are creating it, perpetuating it, you can actually change it. So I'll give an example of how I did this. Um, I was on the airplane and you know how you get those television monitors right in front of you? So I was looking at the television monitor and I, through it, I could see like this wrinkle in my forehead that I can't see anymore. <laughs> and what I did, I, I started to watch a movie, but every time I would kind of see my reflection in the mirror, I'd say, oh, all the points of view creating that line collapse those back to energy. All the points of view creating that line collapse those back to energy. All the points of view creating that line collapse those back to energy. And by the end of the two hour movie, the line was gone. Okay, because I did that for pretty much two hours, right? Not like completely you know, with my 100% attention, but I just kept doing it and kept tapping into that because my points of view are what's creating that. Right? It's not someone else. It may be 
that I'm mimicking the way my mother has aged, the way my father has aged, the way I see age occurring around me. But even that is perpetuated by thought. Okay. So super cool exercise to do. If something doesn't change overnight, something doesn't change in two hours, be easy on yourself. Okay. I also have this amazing class on my website. It's called um, Clearing Your Points of View About Aging. People loved it so much that um, we did a second class called Clearing Your Projections and Expectations About Aging. And those are both uh, they're super cheap. Um, they're like 20 bucks uh, on, um, in the shop at meetkathywilliams.com. And then um, you also get 20% off with the code SMRADIO as a listener. So SMRADIO in the sh and the shop at meetkathywilliams.com. Okay. But the thing is, as well, is we don't have to judge our bodies against what they used to be, right? So, you know, just like cars, the 2019 model is not the same as the 2017 model. But the more we appreciate it, the more we, we love it, the more we allow it to show up how it's showing up, the more the 2019 model, because it is the conscious organism, can change with grace and ease. And, you know, what, it, what just occurred to me is, let's say you have an injury or an illness, same kind of thing, appreciating the illness for whatever it's brought you inviting it to speak to you, inviting it to give you information, right? Like, what has this taught me? What is it teaching me? I, I've worked with so many people who have an illness or a, who have an injury, and often the message is, oh, slow down. Start to appreciate life as it is. That's not always the message, but oftentimes. You know, and your body is such an amazing vehicle, it will show you that. Again, last week's show was full of different questions, including questions to use with your body. So um, have a listen to that one if you haven't. And you can hear that at iom.fm under Sexy Mom Abundant Life or on iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, right? all those different places. YouTube. Um, so this dialogue and appreciating your body, not comparing it with what it was before. The old model, not comparing it with how your friend has shown up. Okay, body, how would you like to show up? And how can I facilitate that, right? Facilitate means to create ease. So how can I facilitate that? Is it by letting go of my points of view? Is it by, you know, dropping the judgment and coming into more gratitude? Is it by allowing my body to spend more time on the earth, which is actually healing? There are more and more studies on this, you know, concept of earthing, letting your body have a connection to the ground. And the planet is magnetic. Um, then I could tell you all sorts of things about grounding with using a, a spoon on your feet, like a, a um, what's it called? Um, steel. It's got to be a steel spoon on your feet. Really helps ground the body to the planet. Um, so what is it your body would like more of? Would it like more conscious touch? Would it like more soothing sounds? soothing the nervous system? Would it like you to do some breath work to, to um, allow the nervous system to calm down? Breath is actually one of the fastest ways to change the sympathetic, parasympathetic balance. So in essence, 
taking you from the stress response, fight, flight, or freeze, into the relaxation response where blood returns to the, the organs, which allows you to digest better, to reproduce better, <laughs> to, to think better, to, uh, you know, allows your heart rate to slow down, bringing more ease. Okay, so deep breathing is one of the most powerful ways to change also all of those things and also your emotional response. So just inviting your body through the senses to be nurtured. And what can you add in terms of smell? Touch, taste, are there soothing sights? And sounds. You know, for me, I live near the ocean on Maui. The ocean is one of those things I find super nourishing to watch, to hear, to feel. Um, it just calms my nervous system right down. So part of loving our body is allowing it to be nurtured in all these ways. And also, what kind of clothes does it like? Your body is what wears the clothes. Every time I, I facilitate a retreat or a, a, a longer program, I go to my closet and pair out, you know, weed away the things that don't work for it anymore. Because they have either old vibrations or, or it doesn't feel good on the skin, really, because I've received an upgrade. So um, it may be useful to write a list. What can I find, what can I add to my life that would be really nurturing for my body? So in terms of, you know, and maybe you're led to tap into all the five senses, but also, oh, yeah, I've heard about that float tank in my town. Let me try that out. Or, oh, you know, my, I took my mom on her birthday to a Himalayan salt cave. It was so cool. I mean, it's, it's essentially a room, like in a town, but the, it's filled with salt, like salt on the floor, salt, salt on the walls, um, these giant salt rocks, like pink salt rocks. And it feels so good because of the negative ions in the air. So it's like, what have you heard about? What would you like to experience? What would your body like? And making a list and then exploring all those different things. So I'm going to lead you through a short exercise now. Uh, if you have a hand free, use your hand. Uh, if not, come back to this later and, uh, and enjoy it because it's a gift from you to you. If you can use your non-dominant hand, go ahead and use that. And just place your hand on your face. Okay. Maybe on a cheek, wherever it lands and feels right. And allow your hand to nurture your face. And your face to nurture your hand. This reciprocity gifting and receiving yeah. and just say thank you body thank you for everything you do for me every day i'm so grateful for you and the kindness that you provide the kindness you display every day Thank you for the innumerable things you do from digesting my food and eliminating my waste to keeping the perfect temperature balanced. Thank you, body, for allowing me to experience the sun on my skin and the warmth of a hug to the beauty of nature and the sounds of my favorite music. 
thank you, body, for allowing me the adventure of life on earth. And if you like to move your hand and caress your skin, go ahead and do that. Maybe even allowing your hand to move downward to your heart or wherever would like more warmth and affection. And this exercise can be really powerful for changing your relationship with your body to one of I'm against you, I have to manipulate and control you into one of we're in this together. Thank you. I'm here for you and you're here for me. So when you were a child, you didn't judge your body. What would it take for you to enter that spaciousness of ease and receiving and kindness and love? That will create a different possibility. And I know sometimes what we've been through with our body is painful or challenging, but stick with it. Stick with the kindness persevere in that and things will change everything is energy so the more you can use your energy to nourish your body it can provide miraculous changes thanks for being here with me everyone sexy mom abundant life if you can't wait till next thursday check us out on itunes iom.fm and soundcloud aloha